Guys, I am so excited for today. Joe Biden has finally decided to enter the race. I have been waiting for this day for a very long time, and I think you will see why. Let's see the introduction to his campaign. Just released that video announcing his 2020 bid on his social media accounts. He is framing his campaign as a battle for the soul of a country, a message that he's really carried over the past year. Take a listen and a look at what he had to say as he officially announced his candidacy for president. Charlottesville, Virginia is home to the author of one of the great documents in human history. We know it by heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. We've heard it so often, it's almost a cliche, but it's who we are. We haven't always lived up to these ideals. Jefferson himself didn't, but we have never before walked away from them. Charlottesville is also home to a defining moment for this nation in the last few years. Do I agree with Joe Biden? Not particularly. Do I think his issues are going to change the country? What issues? Do I think he's going to bring a new and exuberant way of looking at the country and inspiring the next generation? Not particularly. But as, as someone who covers news, I am very much looking forward to covering Joe Biden. Let me share a little taste of what I mean. It has been an issue that has been in the hands of the racists, and we liberals have out of hand rejected it because if George Wallace is for it, it must be bad. And so we haven't really looked at it. Now there's a confluence of streams. There is academic ferment against it. Not majority, but academic ferment against it. I give you my word as a Biden, I put in over 100 hours, by far, I would say close to 300 hours, on just torturing this thing, meeting with leaders, meeting with the people on my staff, calling my staff together, um, uh, and the blacks in my staff together saying, oh, look, this
I have now that I have some sort of new allies in this area, it's become respectable now for liberals to at least say publicly what they've been saying in private, that busing doesn't work. We are trying to figure out whether or not we can come up with an innovative piece of legislation which would limit the remedy. And I don't honestly don't know whether we can come up with something constitutional. And if we can't, I will not, in an attempt to eliminate busing, violate the Constitution. I won't do that. The only way, if I'm going to go at it, I'm going to go at it through a constitutional amendment if it can't be done through a piece of legislation. That's just a little of his views on busing back in the 70s. A stance he's never apologized for and thought he always did correctly. From Joe Biden. I do not buy the concept popular in the 60s, which said, We have suppressed the black man for 300 years and the white man is now far ahead in the race for everything our society offers. In order to even the score, we must now give the black man a head start, or even hold the white man back to even the race, Biden told a Delaware-based weekly newspaper in 1975. I don't buy that. He doesn't to this day. Those are just a fraction of the papers that are out there on Joe Biden. I only looked through about a dozen. This is going to be a very exciting race. And do we really think that these are just going to go away? Biden has more baggage than every presidential candidate, with perhaps the exception of Trump, combined. See All you, right. beautiful child. All right, just guys. Remember, no dates or boys to your 30 years old. <laughs> I like that. That's exactly right. Old. Time That's to wrap it up, Jacob. I got four Time granddaughters. Beautiful granddaughters like you guys. And guess what? The granddaughters are better than daughters. You know why? <laughs> About age 12. This beautiful butterfly bed that can be and you're going to walk in the next time your dad will give you a snake in the bed. <laughs> and you're going to say, Dad, drop me to the corner. Dad, don't do it. Dad, don't kiss me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your granddaughter is all the love of us. Yeah. I got my 17-year-old granddaughter. Beautiful, beautiful girl. And so we were at Christmas shopping. And we're walking through the mall. She said, Pop, can we hold hands? Doesn't look that good. Come on. <laughs> you know, God love it. Spread your legs. You're going to be <laughs> frisked. Drop your hands. In. You say that to somebody in North Dakota, they think it's a frisk. Drop your hands on the side, you know. I <laughs> think you're in trouble, right? 15. Remember, no serious guys in your 30. Okay. 30. Okay. Let me ask you all a question. What do you get with a candidate that can be taken down for racism? can be taken down for sexism, can be taken down for not having real policies, can be taken down in so many different ways. Most of the politicians we cover in this election, in the Democratic side, have a few different things that we can single out that we don't approve of, like their corruption, where they get their money from, if they have certain histories, Joe Biden has everything and more. So let's together welcome Joe Biden to the 2020 election. We look forward to covering him. Did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe. Paul, what do you think? We need your help in order to fight back against the military industrial complex and corporations. Yeah, that sounds right. You can do that by going to our Patreon page and supporting us. All we ask is for the equivalent of one Starbucks iced coffee a day, which is just $50. Please help us out. It's cheaper now.